Welcome, Illy members and fellow landscape learning community. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Wes Jackson, and I am an Illy mentor and serve on the Illy Board of Directors. I will be today's moderator for this webinar. Today, we are featuring one of our Sequoia sponsors, Sterling Lighting, presented by Patrick Harders and Nels Peterson. Patrick is the owner of Sterling Lighting, and Nels is the lead designer. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. I'll be asking five prepared questions during the first part of the presentation to keep content and pace consistent. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. I'll address them to Patrick at the end of their presentation. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Sterling. Hi, uh, I'm Patrick Harders, and I began working, and really my affiliation with Illy a while ago, uh, really in the background, I would say. I started my lighting career in 1998, 2003 or four, I was introduced to Jan's book. Uh, at that time, I found it very challenging as a lighting designer. As I've grown in my lighting design skills, I found that book has reached deeper and gave me greater understanding of lighting design. Um, so I really appreciated, really, I think that was the, the Bible for landscape lighting that was out there, and especially when it gets the lighting design. Um, I started my own manufacturing company for 20 years. I've been been doing design and installs, but 2011 we started a manufacturing uh, fixtures. And about three years ago, I was asked by Scott Williams to uh, sit in on a transition time period for Italy. Jan had stepped down a year or two before. There weren't really any IC courses happening at that time, and hadn't for a year or two at least. And so he asked myself, James Selecki, Don Hollingsworth, all to come in really as outsiders and just to observe and give our opinions on what we thought the direction of Italy should be moving forward in the future. Uh, we spent three pretty rough days, uh, all day, uh, just going through where we thought Italy should go, what we thought Italy should do. And uh, about six months later, I was asked to join the board of directors and that's where, where I've served, is on the board of directors. Um, I've saw Italy and we even transitioned out of OU and onto its own, own beat, but. One thing I noticed with Ilya is I'm very passionate about it being successful and growing and doing well. I think this is the number one platform for training lighting design. So rather than setting up a competing lighting design training with Sterling Lighting, we've partnered as much as we can, as much as we've been able to. So uh, we've done a number of things internally behind the scenes, whether it's setting up uh, videos or media websites, whatever it is that we can do to help out, uh, Sterling Lighting has done that. And we're very, very much a proponent of Illy because of the platform it gives for training and enhancing lighting designers. And really the people in my company, the people we work with, we're lighting designers at heart. And so this is our passion. This is what we love. So uh, Illy is a great organization for us to be part of. Fantastic. Okay, question one. Which product or product series would you say are the flagship product of your company and why? I'd say it's our SL series is the flagship product. So what happened is I was doing landscape lighting design and installation for years. LED came out. I jumped right on to uh, what I thought LED, the, the, tech, te the technology moving forward. I jumped right into it. And what happened is I was buying a very expensive fixture that had a 50 to 70% failure rate in the first year. And so I was trapped having to come up with my own product line because that company I was working with didn't honor the warranty. So we started working on coming up with a drop-in lamp, and that was our first thing that we designed back in 2011. Um, I noticed issues right away with the drop-in lamps, and so I met with an engineer, and we discussed what the problems were, and he said it was really simple. He said, air is a horrible conductor. So if, you're ever, if you ever built a house, you know insulation is really trapping air so that heat doesn't move back and forth between a wall. Uh, same thing with landscape lighting. If you have a lamp inside of a fixture with an air gap and then a brass or aluminum fixture, there's going to be a lot of issues with just trying to dissipate that heat. So we wanted to come up with a fixture that was very simple from the standpoint it was going to dissipate the heat, but also very easy to service. And that was our SL series, as you see here. So 2012 and 13 is when we were designing this. We, we um, unveiled it in 2013. What was fun about this is I got the option to say, if you're designing a light fixture, what would you want it to do? And so I wanted a light fixture that I could change the lumen output, the 
beam spreads. So really I could hone it in because sometimes I would specify a project, lights on a project, and I would just get it wrong. It might need it to be a little bit brighter, might need to be a little softer. And it's those little details that make those projects great. So these were the first line of fixtures where we were able to adjust the lumen output, we were able to adjust the beam spread. And it's allowed me as my local installation company, it's allowed us to focus on what we do best, lighting, design and lighting install so we could really grow our company. And what's been great about it is it's reliability. It had a 0.25% failure rate since the summer of 2013. Uh, so it's been time tested, proven, and it's really performed great. And um, it's been a very reliable fixture, really heavy duty, very durable, but the performance has been key. Great. Question two, tried and true flagship products will always have their place, but what are some of the new innovative products that Sterling is offering? Uh, I'd say we've been working for almost two years on our TFA series. And so twofold on this, starting in July, we start unleashing the, or unveiling the TFA series. Um, and I think what a lot of manufacturers in the industry have bought into a false notion that the lighting designers looking for a inexpensive $39 light fixture. Um, my feeling is that's not the case. I don't think we're looking for the cheapest product we could possibly buy to throw in the ground because our time and our reputations are so important. So we have our SL series as our standard line. Um, I'd say a good analogy is the Toyota to the Lexus line. Something's very reliable, so it's very durable, performs great. But the TF series, TFA series is something that uh, it's a totally new line, very premium, very high end. Um, when I started with it, I got to have a lot of fun because I think a lot of light fixtures, we don't really focus on light fixtures, we focus on what they produce, but there's no reason that they can't be beautiful. So we started off taking off of the Art Deco designs of the 1930s, um, say a 1936 Knucklehead or a Lincoln Zephyr. And they had big, voluptuous, beautiful curves to them. And you look at these fixtures, that's what they have. They have a lot of a lot of curves, so a lot of durability. They're beautiful light fixtures, very heavy duty, but they have a lot of innovation built into it, um, such as this is adjustable from zero to 650 lumens on one side, 2,700 or 3,000 degree uh, uh, Kelvin on the other side, and it's a hex lens that's removable. If you ever put it into the ground, you can simply adjust it very easily. Solid brass, uh, just a really beautiful, durable fixture. So we have the TFA-04, which is already out, the TFA-01, our well light coming out this July, which is really a premium top of the grade well light. Um, and then the next series coming out August and September are the minis, because if you're part of Italy, one thing that you, you'll understand is bigger and brighter isn't always best. So these are some of our smaller fixtures, getting even smaller than say the old MR8s. Uh, this is our TFA-01 mini. This goes around 400 lumens down to zero. All of these, by the way, as my attorney would say, is make sure I tell them they're either patented or patent pending, uh, just to protect ourselves from the people that try and steal our stuff. But um, very small, very compact, allows us to really control the light output. It's got that same knuckle design, beautiful fixture. We have a mini well light as well coming out. That should be coming out uh, this summer. And one that I'm really excited about is our mini down light. So I spent most of the COVID time climbing trees. And I think I put about 30 or 40 down lights on my own property. And one thing I noticed is when I first put them up, I put them up too bright. I was five, 600 lumens and I really didn't need that much. And so this is a much smaller fixture. Uh, this is a, a shroud that was uh, inspired by Don Bradley. Uh, we had a chance to talk for a couple hours at a uh, Italy event and just came up with different components of the shroud, but beautiful little fixture. Um, that we can put up in different locations to really hide the light source. So I think the TFA series, I'm really excited for that coming out this summer. Question three, lighting designers and contractors alike are always looking for differentiators. Are there any application specific products, features, technology from Sterling that could be considered a differentiator in our industry? Um, yeah, I think threefold. I think number one, our products are all designed by lighting people. So you have a much different feel and use of the product than you have on most products that are just designed by engineers. Uh, I think number two is the testing. I just find that when I, as, as I look at different products and use different products, and we still use different products out there, that the numbers aren't always consistent from one product or one manufacturer to the next. 
So we've sent every one of our products at every setting and every lumen setting to be LM30, LM79, LM80 tested by UL. So that way, as a specifier, you can see exactly how that's going to perform, what the actual output is, what the actual energy use is. Um, we feel it's really important that that's done and done on a consistent level. And then the third thing that I think we've done very well in the past, that is the electronics. So as we stepped into the TFA series, we wanted to even do better at that. And when I was at the last IC um, down in Arizona, there was a product out, I think there was three, 400 fixtures that Italy had actually installed about four years ago. There was a number of probably 200 of them that were no longer working. It was blamed on lightning strikes, and I don't even remember who made the fixtures, but I never believed it was lightning strikes. I believe it was just heat. Those fixtures really weren't designed. Most likely what happened was a photocell trip, something happened, and those lights stayed on during the day, and that's a really tough environment. So we brought on a full-time engineer, Paul. Uh, he spent almost 30 years with Texas Instruments and big-ass fans designing electronics and LEDs for them. He came on full-time with us. He's in Kentucky, and he designed our electronics on the TFA fixtures we have coming out, which we're actually manufacturing these in Ohio. So a shout out to Chris Mitchell. He'd be happy that these are actually designed in Kentucky and they're being manufactured in Ohio. So we're kind of surrounding him. Um, but what we did on this is we made sure that it was not only we could specify the components and ensure we're going to get the right components, but we could also design it to do what we wanted to do. So we actually put this driver at a ambient temperature of 160 degrees. We ran it down to nine volts as the energy input and at 1150 lumens. So it was really the most difficult thing that this uh, driver is ever going to experience. And at that point, if that temperature ever started to increase on the driver or it got close to where the capacitors can handle, it'll start stepping itself down and even shut itself off to protect itself from damage. Um, so the fact of having our electronics being manufactured in America. Our, our goal is by 2021 to have all our electronics made here in America so that we can keep the quality control where we want them. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that makes us a little bit different is the way we control our lights and then the quality control we have on making sure that they last and perform the way we want them to. Okay. Question number four. For Sterling, what is the highest priorities when developing landscape lighting products with regards to quality, cost, and availability? I would say number one, and I'll go off a little bit, but I'd say number one is performance. Uh, we could have a great pro product, great price, you know, available, everything, but if the light output, what we're ultimately selling is how that light performs. Um, if the performance isn't there, nothing else matters. So I think it's performance number one, reliability number two. Everything we offer is over 92 CRI. Some of our products are up as high as 95 CRI. Um, and that's got to be there. Then after that, we want to have a good value. We're not looking to run to the bottom and have lower price. We want good quality products that if you're either scaling your business and you need something that's reliable, or if you're specifying projects as Nels does a lot where he's traveling all over, he wants to be able to put in a product that he can install and trust that it's going to work and look great. Um, so I think those, after that, it's just the availability of the product. Um, and we always make sure we're Try to keep a very large inventory. 98% of the time, if you place an order, we ship out that same day. So we ship right directly to our customers. Question five Where does Sterling provide value to the landscape lighting industry? And secondarily, the landscape lighting design community? I'd say a number of things. The people we bring on are important. We have Scott Romecker, uh, who we've brought on, who has 20 years' experience in lighting design. Uh, he's passionate about lighting, does it, um, does it just for fun whenever he gets a chance. Um, we had Sarah Federoff, who really focuses a lot on social media and assisting people and working with people. I've been very helpful with that. Um, Jim Hahn, who's our general manager, has 30 years in direct mail. We've actually helped our people with their marketing plans and built up their businesses. And then obviously, many of you heard we brought on Nels. Nels is one of the premier designers in our industry. And uh, actually, now, if you wouldn't mind uh, answering the rest of that question as well. This is Nels Peterson. I'm in, based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I've been doing projects since 1995 when I started my career in landscape lighting. And um, I, I was really excited to come on board uh, Sterling because uh, 
it's I think it's going to elevate help elevate the entire landscape lighting industry. And the question you have is, you know, what value do we bring to the design community, first of all, and then secondly, to the installer? And it's really actually really simple. And this is true for all products, but it's especially true for Sterling. If you were right here with me, I put this, this is our FTA uh, floodlight, our 04 floodlight. If I put this in your hand, I think you'd find it remarkably heavy, remarkably well made and different than most of the other landscape lighting products that are available, both to consumers and to the commercial specifier market. I mean, it's literally a bespoke estate quality fixture. And I believe our products are going to help elevate all the products across the board, but we have it right now. And the value we bring is when you place, first of all, it's incredibly versatile and won't go back over it like Patrick did, but with the adjustability and the, the thought that goes into this, the designer can be rest assured that the product that's being installed is going to be adjustable and uh, it's going to be a true lighting tool. The, the, the installer, our, our clients, can put something in the client's head that, a hand that they immediately realize is the very best quality. They're willing to pay for that. And that's really important. And there are other products that have that hallmark too. But our product, I think especially, is just extremely well built. It makes people feel that this isn't a novelty. This is a true investment in their property. And, um, you know, from a design professional, knowing that it has the versatility, but knowing that I'm putting out a product that isn't going to become a maintenance nuisance. Uh, one of the things that impressed me with Sterling, one of the reasons why I came out, I still have a, an installation uh, and specification business that uh, I'm fortunate enough to uh, stay with and be able to use it as sort of a, a, a sounding board and a, a way to measure, uh, you know, the, the success of the industry. But more, most importantly, this, this fixture is, um, how would I say it? This fixture not only can provide uh, whatever I need, but I know that I'm providing the best possible product for the client. And the client, um, you know, sees now this as, as an investment, which of course makes them want to purchase more product, uh, invest more in this application. And we can just, as a designer, we can always do a better job when the client buys more. The, uh, the really important thing is, um, the, I've been so disappointed with many products out in the marketplace, regardless of price, because we, they haven't managed the heat. So as a designer, my, I know that with this product, my job is going to look as good, or my, my client's uh, landscape lighting is going to look as good as it did when the day we installed it. With so many drop-in modules and other manufacturers of lower quality, the, the light starts to decrease, and there are problems right from day one. And the client walks out a year later and goes, what is it that I bought? So it's, um, it's, it's an assurance that whatever I am as a designer designing is going to, is going to be sustainable. And from an installer standpoint, I mean, it couldn't be better. It comes out of the box. It cuts down on the, there's no assembly, cuts down on the installation time. And once again, everything that that contractor, our customer is hauling around is of the very highest quality. The clients can pick it up. The clients can interact with it. And they don't, they don't feel cheap and they don't feel like they're just buying some other knockoff thing that's on a high-end box store retailer shelf. And then, of course, there's the support. As a designer, this is really our hallmark. This isn't a company owned by a, a manufacturer that has all these other interests. This is a small, responsive company that is owned by, ran by, and has a sales and support team that are all in the business of, of, of relating to contractors. I'm a contractor. Patrick's a contractor. Um, our other sales members are contractors, and we really get the business. And we can be instantly responsive uh, because there's no big super hierarchy. If we see something that's needed in the marketplace, if one of our customers has a concern, it's just us. I mean, we're, we're right there, and it goes right to the manufacturing point. We can be very responsive. We have been, and I think we will continue to be in the near future. We just really want to elevate the entire industry, and that's why I chose to become a part of Sterling. That's excellent. Uh, thank you for answering our prepared questions, and I will now ask some questions from our attendees. Just a reminder, attendees, please be sure to type your questions into the Q&A box in your control panel. First question, does the downlight come with a mounting box, and if not, will it? So the TFA-03, what we, and this is just made by, they have a junction box. What I've decided to do on that, it's going to have a mounting bracket that's coming out. I think it ships out in two weeks. All the fixtures are going to come with the mounting bracket and a 50-foot wire lead with a longer shroud. 
Uh, those are all things that I just found were made it much easier. So we do have a junction box option. Um, and I know that's, I think that's the one product that's on inventory uh, back order right now. But um, what I found was just as simple as putting a 50 foot wire lead. The small mini downlight's gonna have a 30 foot wire lead because typically that's usually not gonna get quite as high as say our, our TFA 03 series. So um, yeah, that was some feedback I got from some other people and then myself going up in trees rather than mounting the junction box through the connection, it's just easier to put a 50 foot wire lead on and drop all the way down and, and bring those wires all together. Okay, um, and then what is, what is Sterling offering for dock lighting? saltwater environment and submerged saltwater application fixtures? So currently our underwater light um, is a 316 stainless steel underwater light that can be used in those environments. We also have a dock light that is we're looking probably at end of August fixture. So that's going to come in a nickel finish, a raw brass finish uh, are going to be the two finishes that has uh, for dock lighting. And the other one that some people sometimes use as a fixture such as a mini well light with a special shroud on it. Uh, with those, same thing, I recommend either a nickel or a wall brass finish if you're in the uh, saltwater environments. Okay, great. Um, but, oh, sorry, go ahead, Patrick. It will, be a, it will be a surface, the dock light will be a surface mount. It's a beautiful little light. Um, what will be nice would just be two or three screw holes that screw right onto it, drill a hole for the wire to go through. So it's a really easy installation. It gives a great light output. It's got a similar technology to our SL07 as far as uh, light dispersion. Oh, sorry, I have myself muted. What is the standard wire link for path, well, and spotlight fixtures? Uh, path light, up light on the O1, the SL series are all 10 feet. Um, that was just my personal, what I felt worked really well was 10 feet to 25 feet. Unfortunately, when I saw other people using it, they, weren't, they, were, they had a mess of wire and they weren't cutting them and things like that. I found 10 fixtures on average brought me about three to four fixtures I could put to one connection. On the SL series, we're actually doing a 15-foot wire lead, uh, which include the well light, the TFA 06 well light, um, and the 0401. Uh, they're all going to have a 15-foot wire lead on that. Can uh, longer length wire leads be ordered? Sure. Okay. It's something we do in a little bigger quantity. Um, we wouldn't order like two, but it's something that we could definitely, especially we have a lot of customers that, you know, they're, uh, been with us for a while and they say hey I'd like to go ahead and make a change and we'll just order a, a we'll have that fixture specified just for them so we order 20 or 50 or 100 or more uh, just for their application when they're needing it because a lot of times when one person has a need other people have that same same need very very true um, okay so next question any specs on the on those mini well lights fixtures yet not yet um, that has not been sent to you well. That's actually under patent pending right now and finalized the design. The one thing that's kind of neat about this, this could fit in a 1.25 inch PVC pipe. It also fits onto our threaded uh, extension step. So it could fit onto there. So if you did want to use it where you didn't want to use PVC, wanted brass for some reason, it has that application. Um, spec should be coming out, I'd say, as we get closer to releasing it, once we send it in, uh, I've learned the hard way to make sure that we have a third party test going on everything. Like we know what it's going to do, um, but sometimes different ways of positioning the fixture, different test modules can perform differently. We trust UL on all of that. So once that gets a little closer, we'll release all the UL. But in the next seven to 10 days, we should have a full listing of all the products we've sent over to UL so far for their, all the three different tests we have from them. Awesome. Um... Next question. Can you review, and they're referring to the Archer light. What is the Archer light? This one right here. So this is a real basic light that we came out with. Um, just a simple idea. And I, I think I told a story in a video if someone watched it, uh, if anybody's watching it, uh, that I was sitting on my front porch and it was really, I was looking at a great myrtle three at the end of my driveway on one side that the viewing angle wasn't correct. It was fine pulling up the driveway, but I needed more fixtures. I didn't want to put our larger O1 on it because I was dropping them all down to 200 lumens anyway. So we came up with this fixture. We're using the internals of the SL07, which 
is actually the most reliable fixture we've ever had. The, the, the SLO7, our path light, has just been rock solid. So we use the internals for that. We have different optic settings. What's nice about it, it's a very small fixture, not much to it, um, can bury it fairly deep to really hide this fixture. And really what this was also designed for is, it's a, it's a very good value for a fixture. Um, this is our best price fixture I think we have on the market. So my thought on if you need to have more lights for better viewing angles, such as two or three lights on a smaller curtain rail or a smaller statue, this is a great light for that. Not a lot to it, you know, knuckles, just real bare bones, but a light that performs well. And it kind of goes back to my old days of, we use 21, 35 watt halogens for everything. So this comes with two options, really the equivalent of a 20, 20 watt halogen or, or a 35 watt halogen. So um, real simple, you pick and choose, you can change the optics up with the, the, the temperature or the, the uh, lumen output is fixed on that one. So just to keep the cost down. Does that fixture accept any lens accessories? Like a hex yes. so, Okay. Yeah, yeah, actually the hex louver lens from the TFA-01 will fit right on that. Those are, they're inexpensive, they're a dollar or something, not a big deal. In fact, a lot of our customers are just ordering the hex lenses on all their fixtures. The interesting thing we found going through the third party test is putting a hex lens on this will cut your light output by about 40%. Um, so that's something to keep in mind in lighting design and specifying that we have the UL testing for that as well, where we tested every lumen output and also we tested with the hex lens on. Uh, because all of that has an effect on your lighting design and your specification. Can you ex can you go over and review and uh, the features of the well light? Sure. Nels, do you have a well light with you? I have one out in the truck, Patrick, uh, and I'll just take a second to get it. If you want me to grab it, you can keep other people entertained and I'll grab it for us real quick. Maybe take another all question. Right, I'll go to the next question. Um, what kind of tree mounts are you offering currently? Uh, right now we have uh, a, a junction box. Um, it's a great little brass junction box. And then the other tree mount that we're looking at is a two-hole bracket. Uh, what would be nice about it, and when we have it, it'll come out this July, two, two holes in it, the bolts are going to be fixed on it, so it'll really just be taking your drill driver and putting it to the, the length that you need so you have the offset for the half an inch. All right. Uh, one inch offset so you have the room for the tree to grow, uh, but that will just come right on the fixture and it'll just make the installation a lot easier um, because you could just go simply up with the drill driver and drive them right in. Uh, we'll have a, a spacer built into it as well. So uh, when that comes out, I'll have a video on it and I think that'll be very popular. And it's only from trial and error of using different junction boxes and different methodology that for the most part has taken too long. Um, so that, that was our solution to that. Uh, the next question is, your, your thoughts on Wi-Fi control of lighting systems and color li colored lighting systems, and do you see these trends making it into your product offering? Um, I'm not a big fan of Bluetooth. I think that, and you didn't ask this question, but I'm not a big fan of Bluetooth. I don't think you get the range you want out of it. I'm not a big fan of Wi-Fi. Uh, from a service standpoint, any kind of customer changes a router, does anything like that, you have to update it, so you have a lot of issues there. You also have signal issues. Um, so those two things really aren't great. I don't like transformers that have a lot of technology built into the transformer itself. I think transformers are to remain dumb for the most part. They're really a magnet with wires to reduce energy. I would rather have modulars plugging into it. Uh, I think color changing has its place. There's a number of things that we have color modulars you can plug into, uh, cups that we can plug in. Um, but I haven't gone into the full LED color change and control from the transfer. I think my feeling on that, and I may be wrong, but I've been saying for two years it's DMX. I think that's a standard in the industry. I think it should be hardwired in. I don't like any of these other systems. Uh, I hear nightmares of after nightmare, and I personally would, would just do a hardwired DMX system. So that's something we're, we're working on and looking at. Um, and, you know, I do think, as Nell says, that, Color changing is a whole different uh, animal when it comes to lighting design. Uh, I know a lot of purists in lighting design say it has no place at all. I think it has places in accent. I think it can look overdone in sophomore, uh, as Nels has said in a number of occasions. But I think um, you know you just have to be very careful. And I, I would just I'm very slow to enter that local. My local installation company we use Lutron a lot. We use even Unique's timing system uh, from time to time. Uh, which is on a different radio wave length, but um, we just have it until I get something hardwired. We haven't changed it. We haven't gone to something that I don't think that I would 
trust on my own installation and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are both um, things that I don't fully trust at this point. So good. Now he got the, got, Yep, I do. So that's our well light there. You know, there it's go. got three different rings so, on it. Has an open ring, has a grill on it to reduce glare, and in ten days the brass ring comes on. The brass ring will be twelve inches around. Solid, heavy duty brass. It's a uh, it's adjustable from zero to 1150 lumens. Everything threads together. It's designed to really, for the most part, be waterproof. You can change the beam angles on it as well. So it's a really well manufactured, well designed fixture. I'm thinking about July 15th that comes out. I'm sure Nels will drive out to come see you. If you're, you know, there you go. So beautiful little light. A lot went into that. I've spent a year and a half working and designing that. The other thing is everything's modular and replaceable. So if you ever had an issue to replace the driver, the driver, as I said, is American made. Uh, the optic changes out and threads together. So it's beautiful light. Um, and the final thing we're working on is a concrete pour kit as well. And and if I if I may, Patrick, when when I uh, when I met with the the Sterling Lighting team and was looking at coming on board with the company. This was the one fixture that really sold the deal for me, both from as a designer and a contractor. I honestly believe that, you know, and, and without getting tubes, but I think this is the best well light I've ever seen. It fixes all the problems, the water, the moisture, the, the drive over capabilities, the, it's just, it just solves so many problems and having it adjustable, but having it built like a battleship. I mean, it's a battleship, but it's designed like a Porsche. Once again, it's another fixture that the contractor can, put in a client's hand and say, this is what we're going to use from this project. And anything else that comes along is, is better be as well built as this, because this is really impressive. But more importantly, this is totally sustainable and has the best heat management that, that I've ever seen regardless of price. So this is a fixture that, I mean, we're already, um, we already have orders piling up for this fixture and uh, we're, uh, we're just so excited. And it's just, it's just, it's a game changer for our company. Awesome, it's exciting. Uh, what are the beam option, beam angle options with the optics there, and how do they uh, interchange? Currently, it's a it's an optic that's fairly easy to change out. Um, it comes in 15, 40, 60, and open would be about an 80. Um, we're actually currently working as a lighting designer. I want something around seven to eight. So. We're having something made, so that's the next thing that just takes a while to make that. But currently, there'll be I think, three or four, and then an open optic, three or four optics, and an open. But it's just uh, what's nice about that optic. I know there's some other technology out there. Um, what I like about that optic, it allows the most light to transfer out of it. A lot of optics that are out there are easy to adjust, but they do block a lot of the light out or light output. So, that's something that's very important. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, will you have any lights that go into soffits, that recess into ETH? It's on the drawing board. So I have a list of about 15 different products. Um, we tend to be a little slow coming out. You know, this, is, this isn't that one, but this is a hanging light that we've been working on, that patent pending on it, adjustable lumen. Uh, that's coming out this summer. I'd say the soffit light we're looking more as a fall, fall product. Um, my idea on that is I'd like to build a junction box and have it surface mounted. It does make me a little nervous uh, in different communities getting into the soffit, running wires, and people, I see a lot of connections, just wire nuts thrown up into a soffit. That makes me a little nervous sometimes because if there's ever a fire or anything like that, I don't want that to happen. So um, that's where we're trying to build the junction box and really make a, a perfect soffit light. But um, we're very deliberate in, in what we do and how we come about with that. Yes, it's on the drop board. Awesome. Looks like we've covered all of our questions. Uh, Patrick Nels, is there anything else you wanted to cover up before we wrap up? You know, if, if, if I may, Patrick, you know, one of the, one of the things that I really want to do with Sterling uh, as an employee, as a design professional, and, and as a salesperson, you know, for the ILLI members like myself out there, we all, we all know design. We, we all practice this, uh, this art form. But so many times we run up against something where we just want a different perspective. And I would encourage people to reach out to either Patrick or myself and just say, hey, have you seen this? What do you think about this? 
run stuff up against us that if they have questions or concerns or just want a little advice, we're, we're here to help. Once again, this is regardless of the product you use. I hope We hope it's ours. But if you've got a situation, I was just in Texas doing this, looking at situations that, um, you know, they hadn't seen before. They just wanted a sec someone to take a second look at. Once again, a contractor company, contractor focused, and we're, we're, we're in the best position to offer you a second opinion or additional advice. So don't feel free. Don't feel free to reach, reach out to us anytime. Don't, don't be shy. Just give us a call and we're happy. We're here to help. And I'd echo that. I think we have people that will travel. We have some expertise in different fields. Uh, Nels and Scott and myself have done a lot of lighting design. Um, and we're, if you know us, we're not pitching our product. We're, we're here to help and come alongside and, and we bring our product to market in a unique way. We're not having the irrigation supply store sell our product. We're not putting it online for homeowners to see we're here for the professionals. So if that's what you are and this is your business, you're a lighting professional, lighting designer, this is who we work with. This is what our passion is. And if you are crazy enough to get into this field of landscape lighting design, we know how hard it is. It's, there's ups and downs. There's customers. There's problems that happen. Um, we know the challenges. So we're here for you. We want to see this industry grow. We want to see you grow individually as well and as a company. So, uh, yeah, let us know anything we can help out with. Great. Uh, Illy would like to thank Sterling for their support and Patrick and Nails for their time today. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Be sure to visit uh, Illy's website at www.illyedu.org where you'll find this webinar recording as well as information about membership sponsors and the intensive course. Thank you again for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.